uh, investigation. We wanted to update everybody. Uh, with me today is Pete Ellis, a resident agent from the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigations, the FBI, and also is Jeff Vanderweer, the Deputy Director of the Portage Public uh, Safety Department. Uh, the three agencies that I just mentioned are all involved in this investigation. The Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office, along with these other two agencies, are currently investigating the missing Heather Kelly as a homicide case. In the investigation, Heather Kelly's vehicle was found on East Michigan at Sprinkle Road in December of 2022. The vehicle was set on fire and evidence of blood was found inside the vehicle prior to our discovering the vehicle. Heather Kelly's clothing was found inside, correction, found in the area not too far from where the vehicle was found and other evidence was collected and DNA evidence is being processed right now. The investigation has determined a person of interest. That person uh, will not be named at this time. We believe that Heather Kelly knew this person and that records show that we have places them to, together before her disappearance and places uh, the two of them as acquaintances of some sort. We've utilized technology to track the victim and the suspect movements prior to her disappearance and any movements after her disappearance. We understand that there is a person of interest in custody and that with uh, limited cooperation from that person we continue to investigate the entire situation as a homicide. Again, we won't mention the person of interest's name and there's no other evidence that we can talk about at this time. Our investigation continues and we're asking anybody with information to contact the silent observer at 323, correction, 343-2100, the Portage Department of Public Safety or the Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Office. How come the person of interest is in a suspect at this point? Uh, well, right now we're going to call him a, a person of interest. Uh, there are pieces of the investigation that, of course, we can't talk about right now, but uh, we continue to uh, narrow things down even more. Is he, is he in custody for other violent crimes? Uh, so the person of interest is in custody for other crimes. And then, do you know if there were any motives, like were they arguing, what, like what kind of led up to this? So any motives or anything like that would be considered some of the evidence that we would have found by now that we would not be able to speak to. And what's kind of been impacting finding her body? Like what's been impacting the search? Uh, well, you know, we've had multiple searches. We've looked in many areas. You've seen the helicopters. You've seen the uh, teams out there. And, uh, you know, we've looked in a lot of different places. And so right now, that's why we also ask for anybody that may have some information that wants to come forward now, this would be the time to do that. And what led to the FBI becoming involved in this case? Well, so uh, we are partners in many different things. And uh, so, um, you know, I'll just let you speak. Uh, yeah, in these types of investigations, we're here to support our local partners. We can use any type of investigative means that we have at our disposal to them. What did you guys get involved? Chris, Sorry? What, Chris, when did the FBI get involved? Back, I think not too much longer after, in December? Yes, right when this, back right in about December. This time it happened. Can you guys talk about the general challenges you had maybe at the onset to, to develop uh, information to get where we are today? Sure, those challenges are, are pretty much present in any case uh, where somebody's committed a crime and they don't want the law enforcement agencies to figure out what they've done. And so, you know, there's been uh, roadblocks put in our way throughout the investigation that uh, we believe that uh, we are narrowing, like I said earlier, the person of interest. We've also found that uh, we believe the person of interest had uh, some help in after the fact. And so um, we know that uh, it's likely somebody helped with the burning of the vehicle and uh, the possible destruction of other evidence. And uh, so that person is also a person or people are also a focus of this investigation. So you know who that person or multiple people are? And, are, and if so, are they in custody? They're not in custody right now. We do know who they are. And uh, we are constantly uh, trying to make sure that our case is a solid case, of course, before we go ask for any prosecution. And then can you clarify at least how many people of interest you guys have? Is it just one or two? No, we wouldn't clarify as to how many. Uh, we can tell you that uh, there's at least one. 
and uh, right now that is part of the investigation where we're trying to shore up the evidence to make sure uh, when we go to the prosecutor's office we have everything we need. And can you speak to if this man who's in custody has had other criminal convictions? Has he's had criminal convictions? No, I wouldn't be able to speak to that right now. Again, um, we don't like to talk more about the other people inside of these investigations until we have more evidence to present to a prosecutor. He was homeless at the time, if I understand correctly. Do you, is that something you can confirm? That this person of interest was homeless? No, I wouldn't confirm anything about their residency or you know anything else. Have you spoken to Heather's family recently? How are they uh, handling this right now? So we do speak with the family. Uh, the detectives in, involved in this investigation are uh, talking with the family um, on a regular basis. Uh, one of the things that the family has asked is that, uh, that people leave them alone, including the media. Um, they recognize that you're trying to help, and at the same time, they want to make sure that everything is being done uh, appropriately through the law enforcement investigations, and they've asked us to relay that information. And what can members of the public do? Is there anything they can do beyond calling Silent Observer if they have, or Portage Police or somebody, if they have information? Just like in any investigation uh, like this, uh, if they come across some sort of evidence or they believe they have some information, the, their best thing is to contact us. Um, you know, other than that, uh, we can't pinpoint something that we would ask the public to be doing right now, which is hard for the public. We get that. Uh, we know everybody out there um, has taken this case in, realizes the uh, seriousness of it and the tragedy related to it, and they want to help. And there's really nothing at this point they could do other than make sure we have any information that they may come across. So, Sheriff, you're considering this a homicide. Is that a ruling from the medical examiner too, or, or how did that, how were you guys scientifically able to conclusively say that at this point? So in any homicide investigation, you look at all the different pieces of evidence you have, and then you come to a conclusion to declare that it's a homicide investigation, and that's what I can tell you. We've looked at everything that we are able to collect at this point, and uh, that's what we've determined.